Okay, folks, it's spring here. Uh, normally, I enjoy spring, just about everything I like about spring. I can't wait to get back on the water and chase muskies, chase all kinds of fish. But unfortunately, in recent years here, spring also means that there's a big effort in the state of Minnesota to get rid of these horrible, mean, terrible fish that essentially eat everything, apparently. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the details of it real heavy, heavily. Thankfully, there's a, you know, a, a, a group called the Minnesota Muskie Alliance that keeps track of these things and, and organizes and, and gets the information, tries to help people get involved in, uh, in, in helping to fight the silliness. And you're probably watching this on Facebook. So if you scroll down a little bit on my page, you'll see the information that I shared from the Minnesota Muskie Alliance on this. It'll give you the details and how you can get involved. But I guess I'd, I'd, I'd like to add a little something. I was going to put on the pink hat and rave a little bit, but I think this is too serious for that, to be real honest. It's been going on a long time, and it affects a lot of people. It's actually been a topic on the page quite a bit this winter of how Muskies, and in a lot of cases, uh, Northern Pike as well. I know over in Ireland and some places where they get the blame for eating everything. And just in general, the scapegoating of other fish species in a lot of cases, whether it's bass eating walleye or what, whatever it might be. The bottom line is, at the end of the day, there's unbelievable numbers of examples of naturally reproducing fisheries where musky, pike, walleye, bass, and all these panfish, all of them get along quite well together and they're quality fisheries for everything and where these fish have existed for years. There's also examples of stocked fisheries where muskies and walleyes and bass and panfish have been able to get along and, and the quality of the fishing is, is good for all species. There's also quite a few examples where the, you know, the balance is getting shifted in and out in certain species. In a lot of cases, these species are walleye and panfish where the populations are reduced and there's maybe not as many big fish in the case of panfish. The reality is the majority of that is, comes back to human harvest at the end of the day. That's, that's just the simple facts of it. And... I, I could ramble forever, but, but without going into that, there seems to be disagreements on it. And these people essentially want to stop all musky stocking every year. And they're getting, they're getting pretty serious. they got politicians involved. They're literally wanting moratoriums on introducing new lakes statewide, moratoriums on any more stocking any places, and, and, and killing all the muskies and the lakes where they exist. They say they're invasive species. That seems to be a tactic these days in general. When you want to get rid of something, you call it a nasty name. It's an invasive species. These muskies are invasive where they were stocked. You never hear it about walleyes, though. You know, here in Wisconsin, I, I knew all along, and I've checked up on, on Minnesota. It's the same thing. Walleyes are in a lot of bodies of water where they never existed. So they're invasive as well, okay? Invasive whatever. You can't... You can't change that. You can sit around and argue about whether or not muskie should have been introduced or walleye should have been introduced or whatever got introduced. I mean, frankly, we're all humans, right? There's bucket biology that goes on. All Somebody drops bluegills in a lake. Somebody drops smallmouth in a lake, and they don't talk to the DNR about it. These things happen. But we just got to deal with realities. What I would offer, though, is they're, they're talking about these moratoriums, Invasive species, all of these things, spending all kinds of money studying things. Please, let's consider one thing, and the one thing that'll solve this once and for all is that what we really need to do is we need to have a couple experimental lakes. I think all of the evidence and common sense points to the fact that it's human harvest that's mainly affecting things. So the only way to solve this is to get a situation where we've got a stock musky lake, and the DNR has set the amount of stocking that fits that lake. And there's, a, there's walleyes in walleyes and panfish. But let's just say it's a, it's a naturally reproducing walleye lake where there's been no stocking. I'd like to see one like that, and I'd like to see one where there's been musky stocking introduced. There continues to be the right level of musky stocking. 
and there was there's walleyes with a supplemental stocking there but the difference is is you take these lakes and you say there is catch and release for walleyes as well and maybe catch and release for panfish so the same amount of muskies are going to be going in there and then we're going to be able to find out are the muskies really chasing down every walleye in these lakes till there's hardly any there no matter what or is it more to do with human harvest and then we'll actually learn something without spending tons of money there's obviously a huge amount of lakes in Minnesota that you can do this with there's lots of people like by the way a lot of people don't realize they I'm known for muskie and northern pike and they say well he just that's the only fish he likes to fish for that's the only fish he cares about absolutely not true I love fishing for everything perch bluegills crappies you know well I'd love well I can't tell you how many walleyes I've let go I walleye fish a lot and I let them go especially where the population density is low always let the big ones go no matter where I am we all like to fish for everything so believe me if I honestly thought muskies were eating all the walleyes I would I would be honest about it but but at the end of the day that's the right thing to do though it, you know all of this arguing every year the muskie guys that's the one way to really solve it. We'll really find out legitimately if we do that, we're gonna see what happens and that will probably solve the problem and we can get situations where we've got catch and release bodies, waters and other places where you can harvest.